Welcome everyone to the Nano's Indie Cafe, the show where we discuss and promote indie games. The purpose of the show is to help get indies uh, more exposure. We do this Wednesday through Friday at twitch.tv slash now here at 2pm MST. And today we are doing the first podcast segment of the show. And today I have a very special special guest, Diego Russ, who is the solo dev of Raikou Venture. Welcome. Thank you. So, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and what your game is about and that. Well, my name is, as you said, my name is Diego Haas. I'm from Brazil. I'm an indie developer and solo developer of Raku Venture. And I'm working on this game that is a 3D collector to platformer inspired by the 90s games, the 90s classic games. And I'm working, I've been working in this game about two years. And, and that's it. So, uh, so you said you're from Brazil. Like I, I've never like been to a foreign country. So what, what was it like, like growing up in that country and in that envi- environment? If you don't mind sharing those details. Oh, it's a great, it's a great country, um, a big country too. And we have a lot of great things here, and people are awesome too, and very, very receptive and joyful. Uh, you know, I, I like here. I like very much here. So, uh, is there like a big like game dev community there, or are there only a couple devs? What's the like game development atmosphere like in Brazil? Mm. We have uh, Brazil is the the third 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 uh, big big gamer community of the world, I believe, if I'm not wrong. Uh, there's a great a big community of gamers here. Um, and development, the game development is uh, an area that is growing yet in Brazil. It's something new. You can say that it's something new. Cool, cool. It's, it's always cool to see like uh, game development like grow outside of like the states and like other countries. I feel like we need like more like uh games particularly like indie games um in the like other countries because i feel like it's good for the game development ecosystem so uh did did you play a lot of games growing up like how did you get into gaming did your like parents buy your game system or did you get into gaming like when you were older i used to play when i was young i played on, on nintendo consoles uh, but but nowadays I, I don't have too much time to to keep playing uh, you know and growing things uh, when you're you're older you have a lot of things to do and have and don't have enough time to play but I basically play on my PC and my and I have a, an Xbox to to play too but to be honest I prefer the 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 older games the games from uh, some ten years ago, I think. Cool. Uh, yeah. I. I but to be fair, you are like making your own games, so you you kind of have an excuse for why you're not playing games. Like you, you're making like real stuff, you know. So, <laughs> so um, did you play when three D platform was your main type of games? Uh, when you were a kid or did you have other types of games you also played well i played you know i i i got the time uh, i played an uh, s and s no n s n s yeah the the first game the eight beats game i played a lot of the get that game and we don't we have only two g platform in the um that game so I played a lot of SNS too, and also have a lot of 2D platform and that console. But 
I really my my preferred genre is the 3D platform that I played in, on my Nintendo 64, and I played a lot, a lot, and I spent hours and days and nights playing that that game, and I really love the 3D platform genre. Oh yeah, I think it's a great, great game. Yeah, to play. and it's cool to see more like 3D platformers like pop. Popping like we have Yoko Daily, which is which is a spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie. We also have a Hat in Time. I don't know if you play that one. I didn't play Hat in Time, but I, I saw a lot of videos and, yeah. and things in YouTube. You know. Yeah, I haven't uh, played it. Even I, I have uh, heard of it. It looks cool, but it's really nice to see a resurgence of. These like fifty platformers like we grew up because I also played a lot of fifty like platformers mostly uh the P P PS two age a uh, PlayStation yeah, PS one yeah. and PS two th those were some of my platformers but uh so, so what are your top three platformers since you're a big I played, like I played a lot I played a lot of PS two too and um, but on PS we have a lot of first person shooter games i think much more much more than others kind of games mm. so uh you you really enjoy free platformers what are your free favorite free platformers of all time ah uh, my preference is... well i think mario 64 was the best mm -hmm. the best game 3d platform ever made and i think even it's not a, a 3D platform, it's more like an RPG, but the Zelda of Karina of Chai is a great game too. Uh, it's hard to say only three good games. You no, know, I think Benjo Kazooie or uh, uh, Conquer uh, uh, Bad Fur Day. Oh, yeah, you, when you're talking 3D, you, you got like to talk banjo or like any of the like rare games like rare like back in the day they were like the kings man like the games were like very like successful and really like res resonate with, with like people so like they really like revolutionized like gaming at the time so uh what do you think is the appeal of like a 3d platformer versus a 2d platformer hmm. i don't think i don't think one is better than another but i think in 3d platform we can move around the world and it no you no know, like a open world and this way you can have much more ways to go and things to do more possibilities to to solve puzzles to discovering um i think that's the the advantage that 3d platforms have uh, on 2d but i don't think a 3d platform is better than 2d i think each each of one each has a has a great has a has their beauty in the game. I I think f for me when it comes to 3D, I I, I I like it a lot more like aesthetically, like it's very like st st stylized versus like a 2D, and there's a lot more like p puzzle solving and I guess like collectibles to find. But yeah, that's my stance when it comes to uh, 3Ds. So uh, you, you mentioned um, when we talked offline that, that you w were in advertising, right? Yes. Uh, I... so, so what was that like job like? Um, yes. Um, yeah, it's a, I, liked, I like a lot of advertisement and I work at them advertisement area uh, more than 10 years 
but I think I got a little tired of the that area. Um, the passion for game development called me to to this new area, and I and so I started a transition some years ago, six. about six six years, five six years ago. I started a transition, so I started um, studying and making little games and you know until I feel comfortable and feel confident to to def to quit that area that job to start uh, working on development and game, game development so uh did you m make any games like before Raku Venture I've done some games but it's very small games you no know, in in events I um I started to make games little games games that you played five minutes ten minutes okay um uh, and uh, games that you 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 see in events and expositions okay something very 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 quick to play i i prefer like that's the best way to start with game because let's be real your first game isn't gonna be that great like that goes with any like project yourself. Your first time doing it, it's not going to be that good. You need to do it over and over until you eventually get better. So it's it's good to like practice with like smaller like projects. That way you can like build that skill set to make the project you really want to make. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you you cannot start with a big project and think that you make a God of War game and you know. It's insane. You, you, you can't do that this way. Oh, you need yeah. to start very, 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 very small. Yeah, I kind of like dabble in game development for a, a tiny bit. Like, I remember back in like college, and my friend would be like, "Hey, let's make a game. Hey, for our first game, let's try and make an MMO." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And trust me, I'm I'm not the only like one two man like team that that has like tried to make an MMO. It's never good. <laughs> it's you know, and G GTA uh, Grand Theft Auto mm -hmm. uh, in, in Brazil. We have a, a joke here, uh, internal joke in Brazil that people that start start in in game development. They just want to make a Brazilian GTA. Really? They want to make a Brazil? Yeah, yeah, it's insane. It's almost like you know, you said about the MMO. It's a crazy thing. You you know when you want to start with something too big like that, you got disappointed very 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 easy. Uh, Brazilian GTA. I I I want to play that now. <laughs> <laughs> like... GTA. Grand Theft Auto. Uh, publishers, developers, like get, get, get on that man. I'll, 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 I'll review, I'll, I'll review it. I'll, I don't know. I'll do something for it. But so, <clears throat> game more into your games. So, so to get like the skill set like you like needed to make the game you wanted. Did you like go to college? Did you learn online? Like, what, what was like your learning process to get the skills you needed to make this game? Well, I started to study it online by myself, and I got uh, some materials from Unity. Unity uh, website has a lot of have has a lot of material that you can learn a lot of things, and I started to to study. Uh, C sharp, the, the programming language too. Mm -hmm. So, but in the three um, D part, the modeling and animation uh, of the characters, the uh, characters design uh, was things that I used to to do in my my job, in my advertisement job, because I normally create um, characters and need to animate them to make short short movies, short. Uh, just for advertisement, and so it, I was most used to work with the the kind of the this part of the game development. But 
I needed to learn about programming and I needed to learn uh, how to use the engine. So I learned it all online and uh, a lot of free material, YouTube and Unity website, you know, and talking with oh, yeah. other, the, the, talking to others, developers. Yeah, developers. yeah those, like, it, it's never been, like, e easier to, like, make games. Like, this, and that could kind of be the problem now, because it's so, like, easy to, like, make games. Like, it's can be hard to get your game noticed, because there's, like, so many, like, indie games out there, because it's, it's the easiest it's been to, like, make games. But I, I do want to, like, congratulate you for, like, making it to, like, early access. And you, you already got, like, some reviews. Like, I was, like, watching it, like, this morning. So how does it feel to, like, have your game on early access after, like, working on it for so long? Yeah, it's, it's an amazing feeling. I'm very, very happy because I didn't got... Uh, known any, anyone I don't know how to say it exactly but I didn't have any bad feedback all all the feedbacks that I had the people are enjoying the game and think the game is fun to play even the limitations of being made by uh, one one person and people are very satisfied with the game and uh, it's good to see people having fun with your work with we i think that you that you have done and it's amazing it's amazing i'm very very happy yeah just to give like a little context with my history of your game i think i discovered it like a year ago or i i forget when but it was in like alpha if i not... yes it was a, an alpha version with yeah. three levels i believe yeah three like levels so I played that version and, you know, you, you were kind enough to give me a review copy. So I want to thank that and also want to be transparent about that. But so I played a little bit a uh, uh, couple of days ago to kind of prepare. But I'm only like maybe like half an hour or an hour in. I just want to give that like picture in that context for like everyone. But I, when I played your game, like, I really, like, enjoyed it. It was, like, cute. I, I, I like the, like, little, little, like, outfits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So, I, I kind of want to, like, talk about, like, early access and, like, how complete, like, from beginning to end is the game right now? Is it, like, pretty much complete? You just need to, like, improve, like, bugs and mechanics? Or are the, like, levels that haven't been implemented yet yeah uh we can i can say that is a, a half a half done okay uh, we have a uh, 50 percent made of the game uh, mechanics are working very well mm -hmm. um i tried to fix all the bugs that that we found in this this last week but i think uh, that may appear uh, appear new bugs. Uh, it's normal. Uh, we will never we will never kill every bug. But yeah, I, 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 I hope people find more fun than bugs in the game. But the game it has eight levels now in this early access version, and the final release will have seventeen levels. Wow. Um, yeah. This t uh, in this version I spend if, uh, I playing where as I know all the things and all the secrets and all the puzzles I spend two hours to to got a hundred done of the game a hundred percent done but it's almost like a speed run but in the finish the finish uh, the final release I planning to have five four five hours of gaming but when i play when i play and in my my way speed run knowing all the things i want to spend four to five hours in the game in the final release so, 
seems like you can get in there and I'm confident that like when it's like completely done it's going to be like an awesome like game like you, you I, I can tell you 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 like put your, your like heart heart and soul into this game so when it comes to early access when do you think it's too soon to, to publish a game in early access because you, you see a lot of games like in early access yeah there's no rule to uh, to go into early access you know yeah, but i think people people try to make early access as a crowdfunding way to to keep the game but it's a mistake because uh, early access is not for that. The early access is to to give the opportunity to players to involve to get involved in development and to find what is wrong in the game and you know the people can give suggestions and and you receive a lot of feedback because yeah. before the early access. Yeah, when you make some closer tests, you're testing the game with uh, 10 people, 20 people. It's not enough to have uh, a real feedback about the game. In the early access, we have the opportunity, the opportunity to test your game with 100 people, 1,000 people. And this way you have a, a very strong, very massive feedback and you can easily find what is wrong with, the, with your game and things that you must improve and things that gonna that didn't work that you have to redesign that's the the the, the proposal of the early access yeah and i think if you put like two two like early and just use it like crowdfunding that could like potentially like damage the reputation of your game that you're down the like road because not always but sometimes like when you're in the crowdfunding like state your game isn't always in like a stable like uh format and people aren't always the kindness so like if you put like too early like you could get some like very like negative like comments that m might hurt your game lay on you know that's just like my point of view yeah yeah i i think the same yeah so, so uh how did you like come up with, with, with the like concept of raku venture uh, <laughs> raku this little raccoon um when I started the game, I was looking for a, a character that could be cute and have some... Uh, it need to be a, a little animal because he will, he will protect the nature. So I start to, to searching for animals that could be nice in the game. And when I saw that the raccoon with this mask, and I think, hey, this is a good guy for a game. And, you know, we, we not used to see uh, raccoons as heroes in games. So I thought it's all, the, the, right, the right characters for my game is a raccoon. So I started to make it and I started to design his, uh, his silhouette, his, his form. And so he's born. He has born. And uh, how long did you say your game has been in development? I think you said like a couple years? Yeah, two years, two and a half years, um, around about, about two and a half years. You, you've made pretty good pro pro progress for, for two years and being like a solo dev. So are you completely solo or do you have like other people working on some of the smaller stuff? I'm working it. I'm working it alone. But um, there's a friend of mine that is helping me, helping me with the the, the wording, the text, 
the some dialogues and I, I give him the whole the whole history that I planned my game and he started to to create little little dialogues and little little facts you know he started to make it better writing of the game yeah but i'm i'm do, i'm doing it by myself yeah, um just me cool i like i i, I mean i wish back with like any like indie dev no matter like the size of team but it's pretty cool that you like decided to like do it yourself is there a particular like reason you went solo dev like was it like funding you can like find people or you just wanted to like prove that yes i i, I can like do this myself i don't need a like team in order to like pull this off <laughs> no no i just wanted to to make it because it's a no i i i love the 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 game development and when i started to to study the the game development i started to see that it it can be done by one person so uh, even when I, when i started to make the that little games years ago and i was i always think that hey i can do a game i can do a game by myself because it's not too hard as it looks it seems so i started to make but you know there's no reason to to work alone but i think it's a I, I, personal a personal challenge i think and it's a good like learning experience i i feel like you you like learn a lot more about like how to make games because w- w- when you're doing solo you, you have to like wear all the hats versus if you had a team yep. y- you'd have different team members taking on different tasks but since you're doing it all you, you have to like probably like learn stuff you probably didn't expect to be like learning like you, you do the programming the anime and and all that like stuff I'm um, sorry. I c- could you repeat? Uh, so since you're solo, you, you you have to like put on like all the hats and potentially do tasks you didn't think you would have to do. You, you have to do the programming, the like level design, uh, modeling, and and other like roles that you, you probably didn't realize you had to like do. Yes. Yes. Uh, what's the question? So, um, so c- c- continuing on, uh, so w- w- why a 3D platformer as like your first game? Because e- even though th- it sounds simple in period, that is like a pretty like big like task f- for like a f- for first like commercial game. Well. I started because uh, that's my preferred preferred game, you know, uh, 3D platform, and so I was m- most used to play. So uh, making this game in 3D platform, it's a uh, it's a, a kind of game that I was comfortable to to make because I can place myself as a player and think what what i want to to play what i want to find here and what i want to to solve no it was most comfortable comfortable to me to make a 3d game because i was most used to play this kind of game when i was young go cool. so you, you said before you you chose like unity as your engine um so um why did, did, did you like choose unity uh did, did you consider any other like engines before like sticking with unity i i worked with unreal unreal oh um, my bad yeah <laughs> my god and um, well, well just reverse the question with, with like unreal okay same question we'll replace unity with unreal um because i 
I feel an, uh, Unity is much more uh, intuitive to to work. Um, I, I don't I don't know how to say, but I think Unity is, is easier to work and mm, Unreal is very very. Ah uh, man, I have no words to explain, but I think basically Unity is easier to to find materials to to solve problems to find qu questions in the in the, the web and easier to place um, 3D models and to program. I think is uh, Unity become easier for me to work because there are a lot of people that prefer Unreal instead of Unity. But again, it's a much more a personal thing than a technical thing. So, so, so to clarify, what game engine is Raku made in? Unity or Unreal? It's made in Unity. It's made in Unity. Uh, okay. Okay, so w w would you like recommend Unity f for s someone who's like just getting into uh g game development, or the like uh, 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 other engines you rather recommend to someone who's just learning how to make games? Absolutely, I think Unity is the best engine to to start working. We have a, a new engine called Godot. Yeah. But I didn't saw anything about them. But I think it's a great uh, will become a great engine too. But Unity is, uh, I think Unity is the 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 number one engine nowadays in game design, game the de game development. Yeah. You know, Blizzard use it, uh, Unity and Nintendo use it, Unity to make Mario Kart on the mobile, the mobile version of Mario Kart Tour. Yeah. So Unity has become big, big, big engine. Yeah, I, 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 I did. They know Mario Kart for the mobile was made in Unity. Um, could could you repeat, repeat, please? Um, I did not know. Uh, Mario Kart for the mobile was made in Unity. Yeah, it was. It was. Hmm. And I think, if I'm not wrong, that Mario Run, the game before, was made in Unity too. But I'm not sure about it. Yeah. But Mario Kart was made in Unity. It's it's true. Yeah, I've, I've also been because you, you mentioned Godot earlier. I, I I have been seeing a lot more games like made in that. Mostly like two D games. I, I I don't know if there's a lot lot of like three D games made in it. I don't know like how doable like it is to do three D in Godot. But I definitely have seen a lot of like two D games made in that. Yeah, I, I didn't find any any 3D game made in Godot 2. I only find 2D the same, 2D games. I think they are implementing a new new feature in the engine to to have 3D support, but uh, I'm not sure. I, I'm not know very well that that engine. Yeah, 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 there's like so many like engines. There's like Game Maker, RPG Maker, Godot. There's the cry engine. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about the cry engine. Cry engine. Yeah. That I never work it with. I just work it in games. I just work it with yeah, Unreal Four, Unreal Four, and Unity. Yeah. So before that, I used to make some mini games in Flash, but it's very very long ago. Oh, Flash! I I I I studied like Flash in college and. Yeah. Uh, Rest in peace, Flash. <laughs> so, so, um, so, so, how did, did you uh d decide on your like mascot? Well, I think you briefly mentioned it, but like before you you decided on the raccoon, did, did you have any other like I? Ideas as like a for like a mascot. Um. Uh. To be honest, no. I started with this the this character and and the, 
these things these things go goes on and I didn't study any other option to the character the character so, so, so did the uh so when you first came up with the design uh did it did the design change over like the development of your game or is it like pretty much the same because with a lot of like games like uh sonic and stuff like that like the design change has like changed since its original conception it's pretty the same but um there are little 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 chains but no not too big chains and it's pretty it's pretty the same and that the, from the concept to the the character there is now so to t t talk more about mascots so we you you, you and me we, we grew up with games that they had a lot of, like mascot characters the really yeah. mascots really aren't like important like they usually do there's really not like a lot particularly with the for free like there's there's not has many like major uh mascots as they used to be like my mascots used to like be the thing so do you think like having a mascot for your game is important or do you to think we've like lost that importance over the years. I um. Oh, uh, I think that we will never lost its importance in the games because when I think in a game, you automatically think in the the ca the main character, mm -hmm. and the main character being a mascot, it's easier to to remember. It's easier to place in in the memory. Than a than a real character than a, a person. When you put a person or something real as a main character, you need to remember a person, to remember a face, and remember a name, uh, identity. When put a mascot, you just remember the mascot. You don't need to remember his name. You don't need to remember uh, his face. You know when you you talked about Sonic. Mm -hmm. We don't need to know Sonic name. You just know that that the mascot, the blue mascot with spikes and run fast and runs as a ball and you know it's easier to to remember when you work with a mascot. Yeah, so what do you think like makes a good like mascot? Do you think there's like a formula or like is it just Hopefully you get lucky and people like it. Well, it's mm, it's a um, uh, there is a formula. There is a um, personal taste. There is a um, visual, uh, uh, harmonized visual. You know, because mm, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to answer. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because there's a reason why, like Mario and Sonic mascots are like so iconic, you know. Yeah, yeah, there is, there is. So, what do you think is about those like mascots that like are able to pretty much like sell like IP and like like the Nintendo and like Sega? They're like known for, for like Mario and uh. Sega's known for like um Sonic, like it, it's especially like S S Sega. When you when we think like Sega, we like only think Sonic versus like yeah. Nintendo. While we do think Mario, there are other like mascots within the Sega label that we can think of. But yeah. but in Sega's case, particularly since since the a the probably like the... i think they they're very designed very very well designed and uh, for sure they are the colors and the, the smile and the, the sympathy uh, it's hard to say because if 
if we, they have a, a recipe to make these things, uh, uh, rules to make these things, uh, everyone can make one, can make your own mascot and conquer the, the world. But it's not easy to make a so iconic mascot like they done. And Nintendo, Nintendo and Sega made it very, very well. Yeah, and you know, they also had the advantage of being like in the early days of the game industry. Yeah. So, so there yeah. wasn't a whole lot of like mascots yeah, at, yeah, at that time. So them being some of the first like mascots, that it was really able to like re resonate with a lot of like people. It's a, it's a big advantage. Because nowadays we have a lot of, lot of information around us, so it's hard to make a, a iconic thing. Yeah. So to get um more into your games, so I I I know you said you you you, you have someone else with like writing down your story, but you you still like give them like keynotes of what you want. So what can you tell us about the story of? Right to adventure without like completely spoiling it. Well, <laughs> his grandpa had disappeared. Um, there was a balance in the world uh, made by that relics that was hidden in the world in the form of uh, chess pieces. And Raku didn't know about his, his family, his guardian and hair that the hair I don't know how to pronounce it and and he's discovering his true destiny while the game is is running through the game and uh, the tattoo tattoos they need to the chaos to to rule the world uh, they are dying without the chaos and so that what they Started to looking for the the relics. Hey, I'm sorry, my cat. It, it want to <laughs> oh, to to join the con the chat. <laughs> it wants to be podcast famous. <laughs> yeah, come on, get out. <laughs> Bye, Katie. So that's it. Cool. So, so when you were like coming up with some the. The rough like ideas and like rough draft of the like story did you like take any inspiration from like your personal life or things you saw like around you um i took a little reference from other games that i played you know i i didn't want to make a a, a super new thing a super new thing i just want to make a general thing but well made, you know. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You didn't want to get, get all like all like fancy. You would rather like made make a solid like quality game than than trying to do something crazy and then not like yes. working out. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and also, I can imagine you probably wanted your games to kind of be a tribute. To a lot of the 3D games you grew up with. Am I right on that assumption? Sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, you you probably also wanted your games to be a tribute to a lot of the 3D games you grew up playing. Um, I can't understand. I didn't understand some word in. In the sentence. Okay, I, I'll try typing slow. You, you wanted your game to be a tribute to ah, the, the tribute to the three D games you grew up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand now. Yeah, a tribute. Yes, uh, uh, defining definitely. Uh, it is a tribute because you know there's a lot of reference in the game. That I really want to expose that reference to to avoid people saying, "Hey, it's a copy. It's a copy of Mario. It's a copy of of Benjo Kazooie." No, no, it's not a copy. It's an inspiration. It's I, a I I I don't like buy that like because this game is similar. It, it's a copy. Like I, I mean, there's 
of course, there's always exceptions to the rule, but it's very rarely something to actually copy. Like artists, writers, they take inspiration from stuff. They see something cool. They're like, oh, I want to do my version of that. You know, there's nothing like wrong yeah. with that. Like, uh, what was that, that game called? So, uh, you, you, you know the game like Cuphead, right? Yes, yes. Yes, so there was a... There's a game that launching is launching a Kickstarter. Uh, if like someone in the chat can like tell me what the name of that game is, but it was like pretty like similar to like Cuphead, and people were like, "This is a copy. This is a copy of that. You you're copying off of Cuphead." Uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it had like a similar, st- you know, like style, but to to give like the devs credit in, in the the description of that like YouTube video, they did uh, like admit that hey, we are fans of Cuphead. This is like a love letter to Cuphead, you know? So I, uh-huh. so I, they just wanted to like give back to, to like Cuphead, you know? So, you know, nothing wrong with that. I, I think we need to like calm down and stop accusing like everything that like may have similar ailments like as a copy. Yeah. But unfortunately, the players are evil, and they when they say a, they, when they see a thing that they think is a copy. Yeah, yeah, especially when they don't do the research, <laughs> and they and you find out that like the thing that they were accusing was the thing that came first. That's always kind of funny. So, uh, so uh. You said you started development two years ago, right? Right. Okay, so how long did, did it like actually take you to get that first like build out? It take, um, I think, uh, it's pretty pretty fast to have the, the first build, but the, the first playable build, it take about five, five months, I believe. Yeah, and uh, did you publish that on itch, if I remember? No, no, no. That 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 version takes a lot much time. Um, I think that version takes uh, about one year to okay. to go alive in itch itch io dot io. I I, I, I I I call it itch. That's right now how you say it, but I, I've always called it itch. You know, it's itch. Because that's why I think it's supposed to be like you're trying to scratch that like indie dev itch. That's always what I thought, but I could be wrong on that. <laughs> but that that that's it. Though. I think that was one year to have the first build, the public build, the first public build. So through like developing your game. Wh- wh- because, you know, making games is hard. There was probably a lot of, like, down moments. So what was, like, your biggest down and, like, biggest struggle within uh, y- your game development, like, cycle? Uh, could you repeat, please? Uh, what, what was your biggest struggle developing the game? A big struggle is to find bugs that you cannot repeat in the engine. Oh man, it's it's hard to find. Was when the, you see was, when you see some bug happening in, in a video in a in a live stream, and you try to reproduce it in in the engine on your computer, and you can't. It's hard to find what's happening. Oh, uh, very very hard. Was there a particular bug that like has stood out for you that you you never forget? Uh. <laughs> There's a there's a bug that when you when you are killed in under underwater, you reborn, but you keep breathing like you was underwater. I think and, I I don't know. It's been a while. I that sounds familiar. <laughs> I feel like I remember that. I, I don't know. I I I wonder if I have my notes somewhere. I, I want to go back later. And, because I, I, it I, happened. I, it happened when you played. It might have, like, if it did happen, I really 
if it was when I started taking notes, because I haven't always been taking notes while I stream games. I think I've only been doing the notes thing, I don't know, maybe four or five months. I, I forgot, like, what game I started doing the notes with, but I, I did the notes because, like, I would do, like, tweets of what I thought of the game, but what kept happening is I kept forgetting what I thought, you know. Because because I play like so many any games a week. Like I think I do, yeah, yeah. I do like I four to six different games a week. So you know it's hard to like remember. So yeah, I see. But this bug was uh, hard to find, and I spent all my day trying to figure out what happened. But I I think I finally fixed it. So what was the problem? What was like causing the bug? Something wrong with the the, the programming. Uh, I wrote something wrong <laughs> there, <laughs> but I think it's fixed now. Cool. Cool. So, so it could take like a while for, for, for like an indie game to be able to sing. But, but what was like your turning point? What was when you knew? Oh, oh my God! People are liking this. This is gonna achieve. I'm making progress. Things are looking forward. I'm sorry, I can, could you repeat? Okay, so what was your big like turning point in your development? When did you know that you would like make something special and people were enjoying it and liking it? Like you're moving forward with this. Like what was that big? Oh my god, moment! <laughs> it was when I when I uploaded my first video on a on a Unity community. Unity group on Facebook. I placed a video there just um, uh, without an, any intentions, and so but people start to to like and comment and share and send messages, and so I thought, oh man, people are are liking and enjoying it. That so, must that one was like for so like special and good because I know when like people give me compliments about my stream I don't know why they would but when they do it's like okay I'm not wasting my time like this is actually yeah. go, going somewhere like this is like making an impact and a difference so it, it, I don't know it, it, when people like enjoy your work like people may think it doesn't mean much but it, it like can like make someone's day and keep them going do you feel that? Yeah, I feel like it. It's a, a, a thing that will that people will enjoy, and so it push me push me forward to keep keep working in the game. It was uh, most than a year ago, uh, a, lo a long time ago, that happened. So I started to to work harder in the game and. Uh, you know, I was glad to to have this this moment because I uh, uh, I didn't want to to put a video to 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 post a video on Facebook because I was like um, you know uh, people won't won't enjoy it people don't like it but sometimes you need to to make it to to start yeah to it... start to feel uh, to to work. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty hard to, like, put you, yourself, like, out there, but if you want, like, to actually, like, get somewhere, like, at some point, you're gonna have to do it, like, it's yes. going to be uncomfortable at first, you're gonna be all panicking, be like, oh, no one's, yes. no one's gonna like it, especially at first when no one's, like, commenting or liking, like, sometimes that takes a while to get likes, you're like, oh, it's a rave in a couple months. No one's watching my stuff. Like I'm just wasting my time. No one's ever. I, I should just quit. But like, you just kind of have to like. Yeah, it, it, keep, it should keep, happen. Keep at. Well, you have to do more. You do have to like market your stuff. That is an important like yeah. skill set. It's not just like post and wait. Like that. You that... want the people. You want the people to know your work, but. You you don't want to make your work public. It's it's hard. You know? 
you need to put it, you need to make it public to people know your work yeah and that's just that like you, you have to be like proud of it like you have to yeah like if you're not like proud of it and if you don't like it well why should like other people like it like you and it's okay to like feel down sometimes and be discouraged but you got like present some level of like confidence within your work get what i'm saying can you repeat please uh you, when you present your work you, you have to present like confidence in it and like be proud and and stuff I think the, the world is cutting again. Okay. <clears throat> well, let's, let's try and move on to the next question. Because I think you pretty much got my point. So I, I, I really enjoy the, like, the, the levels of like, Recoventure, the, the, the nice, cute, and all that. So do you have like a workflow, a pipeline? Like, well, what's your level design process like? Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I used to put all the things in the paper before everything. I started to to make some drafts. Um, start to make uh, to draw, drawing some puzzles, and I used to make a timeline too when I want to. This player start here, and then he need to solve a puzzle, and then he need to. To, to fight and you know I, I make a short timeline of the level and then I start to make a, a drawing in, in the paper so I start to make it in a 3d block out so I can test uh, space and uh, and sizes of the things and to test uh, distance of the, the distance jump height of the jump uh, to to see if work if if everything is will work as I think so that's the the part that takes uh, most of time of the development and test uh, the block out to test the block out three D block out so when I, everything is working fine I start to make the art of the level to to finish the level. So that's pretty interesting because I bet that there's a lot of like devs that, that like don't really like plan it out. They just kind of like go with the flow and you know. Do you think it's important to plan out your game before you actually start development of it? Ah, uh, it's important. It's important to plan things. Uh, if we don't plan things, we don't have a direction to go. You need the direction to go. You need to to know where we're going. And without planning, you you run in circles, and it's easy to 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 be working on a game, for example, for years, and the game don't 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 move on. The game don't don't grow. No, you need to to plan things, to put things on the paper. You need to to see where you want to to go. Yeah, because it's it's. it's a but uh indeed probably don't um realize how important and then now i'm not saying you need to like plan a hundred percent like you can't plan forever like at some point you do have to jump from planning to the development but yeah, if, yeah. if you just jump into development and not knowing what you're doing you know it could especially when it comes to coding and stuff like that you, 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 you might find a layer that you might have to like scrap like certain code and stuff because you didn't like plan accordingly so that's another good reason why you should like plan out so yeah if you just do it if you just go into development and go into coding it's uh it's easier to got to get lost and the development so do you have any like 
particular like software that helps you like plan stuff out do, do, do you have do you use like trello or anything like I, that i use it trello and i use it uh reckon and plan but i i didn't use it anymore ah. uh, i i i i used to i'm i'm using now just paper just paper i have a I have a book here, uh, a note here, no, uh, note, notebook, no, notebook, no, paper, paper book here, and I, where I can write everything, and I have all my my notations here, and this paper is it's, it's most it's very important for me because every time I got lost, I got I got well, what I should do now? I take this paper, this this book. And I just need to read it for a few minutes, and I know what we have to 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 do. Okay, because, so because this online this online uh, tools like Trello and Hack and Plan, I designed to work with with team. And when you work in alone. Uh, because I, 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 you know, I like to to draw things. I like to, I like to make a lot of drawings and annotations. I don't want to. I don't like to rewrite things. So Trello and Hack and Plan is hard to to place drawings. You need to write everything. And and, and when I take a paper, it's easier for me because I can fast make a drawing and and make an annotation and. Uh, to uh, not a puzzle to to draw a puzzle to draw a character, it's faster for me to work this way. So, <clears throat> so while I do like uh, the convenience of technology and f f being able to, to like save and access my plans whenever I want, I don't know. There's something about like getting like a physical notebook and just like like drawing ideas now like i feel like it's easier to get ideas from my head when it's like pen and like physical paper versus if it's a word document i feel like it's a lot harder for me to get my ideas from my head to a word document than it is regular uh notepad and a pen yeah i think the same yeah it's, it's easier to work with paper than and and pen. I, I I don't know why, but like, like there shouldn't be a difference. Like at the end of the day, you're just like writing down ideas. But I don't know. Like for me, f but f f f for me, I just like pen and paper. Like currently, I'm I'm trying to f figure out like the approach I want to go with, with, with like graphics, and I, I feel like I'm able to like visualize my ideas but when i'm writing it down on like a notepad but i think that is it because you can visualize that's it paper it's easier to visualize your ideas and to make drafts yeah. fast yeah. drafts yeah and then again everyone like sees and like works like differently you just got to find like what like what works for you and like stick with it you know there's no like right or wrong way unless you're like working for like a triple a like studio then you do what your boss tells you to do you know yeah yeah absolutely so you, you need to to follow the rules yeah but, but if they allow flexibility you know ask and see hey can i do it this way you know but th that's just my opinion my advice i've never like worked in triple a and stuff so like take that with all grant i don't want anyone to get fired because of me you know don't blame nano if you lose your job so so um yeah, me neither, me neither. <laughs> so, so did you make the music yourself oh no no the music is royal to free oh. and it's from a, a composer that i i like too much it's called kevin maclow um, uh, this guy has a lot of sound, good sounds in the. Has he worked on? Has he worked on any other projects before that we might know of? 
the this composer yeah has he worked on music for any like games uh movies or any other projects we may like know him for uh, he, he has a lot of songs and in youtube video videos and games because he has a site where a website when you can log in and download his songs and use it for free so this guy is very popular and uh and in and, and royalty free music but i like i like i like his songs i like his songs so the main concern i have when it comes to using royalty free like music and games and like if i were to ever make a game i probably wouldn't use royalty free music just for this one reason you 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 take the risk of that music being used in like other projects and other yeah. games so it may not feel unique so were you concerned about that like how did you approach that problem yeah yeah I, i'm concerned but i think i'm planning to to insert um original soundtrack in the game uh, next year cool so, so, so uh, you, you said you're going to implement a original s soundtrack. You said. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm planning to do that. And uh, are you going uh, to be making that, or are you hiring a composer? Uh, I think I will hire someone because I don't have enough time to make it. I just I I wanted to make it, but um, there's no time to. <laughs> to make everything in the game yeah there's it, no time it, 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 making it, songs take takes time to make a, a good sound yeah and it's not like uncommon for the little, little, little even like solo devs or oh, music would be the one thing that they like commission someone else to do you know yeah. so it's not it's not super uncommon for like an indie to do that yeah i, I made some songs in the game because when you when you start dialogues with Trinka Tronco, there is a, a motif when you start to... Da -da 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 -da. That sound I made, and I made uh, the, the victory sound uh, uh, when you finish the level. I made that, that, that little sound too. But the, 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 the tracks from the, the levels, they need to be uh, a long song. Uh, they, they need to, to have two three minutes and they need to loop and they need to have some variations to not get boring so it's hard to make the, that songs so i i didn't i will, I will not do, do that the the songs i prefer to hire someone yeah it's good because like music and like sound design and like general is a very important thing within the game and, and it's something that like a lot of people like overlook like you you really want to have like good like sound design like i feel like people for the most part can like overlook like visual and graphics as long as like the gameplay is fun and like story but but like yeah. sound is something you want to get right because if, if you get it right you can really immerse someone within that experience so, yeah. What do you think when it comes to like sound design, and what is your approach with, with like sound design in general? And sound design, uh, I take reference in 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 the games that I used to play, in, like Ducky Kong and and Mario. I I take a lot of reference and inspiration from these games, but uh, the sound effects and little sounds as i said I, I used to to make them so i place my microphone here and start to record things and working on the the songs and i use a a tool that's called f mode that that that, that make my job easier to to make but i used to make it all by myself the sound effects too Okay, so, so one uh, a couple of, like gameplay questions I have. So, 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 so since this is like a free platform, there's obviously going to be like collectibles and and stuff like that, right? 
Right. Okay, so how do you m make it so, like, getting those collectibles are not, like, tedious, but, like, not non-completionist, but people who are complete completionists can still uh, e enjoy getting those collectibles. Like, how do you balance find collectibles for people who don't complete games, but for people who do balance games, uh, complete games? For people that don't want to find out that the collectibles? I don't I don't understand. Could, uh, could you repeat, please? Uh, okay. Uh, when um, f w w w when doing your game design, how do you, do you m m make like finding collectibles fun f for both people who um, who try to one hundred percent the game uh -huh. and for people who don't try to one hundred percent game? How how do you m m like encourage like both? people yeah, to go people. after and make it fun for both groups of people yeah we have this two two kind of player the player that wants to go and finish the game anyway and the the player that wants to find everything and and make a hundred percent of the game but uh you you can progress in the game without finding all the things but um the game will block you when you, uh, in some some way, like, some way, somewhere, the game will block your progress if you don't find a, a minimum quanti quantity of of pieces. But uh, the belly is made by uh, their their pieces uh, uh, easier to find than others, so. If you want to find everything, if you want to make a hundred percent, you need to to look everywhere to to find that piece because there are pieces fine to easy to find and people hard to find. Pieces easy to find and pieces hard to find. That's the the way I make the balance. So I start to to when I want a piece that it's hard to find and people you you have a hard time looking for that piece i used to hide it very well in and the and level and pieces more, most common pieces i used to make it to to have clues on the level to have clues on, on the and the in the ground and or made a maybe a a trail of coins to guide the, the player and to to find that piece so it's do a, a slightly way to balance the game and a slightly way to to guide the player to make it to make what you want it to make yeah i think it's a very like important to have like hands and stuff especially uh for, for people who m may not be like big fans of like 3D platforms like this because a g game is always someone's first game so th this c could be like some people's like first game or like first 3D platform and they m m might want to try and get all the collectibles but they might be like overwhelming to discourage because it's the like first like time playing in this kind of game so it's important to have some kind of thing that, that like helps the player out so, so they don't like get overwhelmed and get upset and like rage quit and never like play the game again because you want the player to like come back and, 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 and keep like playing the game so it's important to have things that can kind of like help them out yeah yes Absolutely, you need to uh, you need to help your player, but you don't need to take your player by the hand and guide him all the way long. Yeah, because that can get like uh, annoying, like really fast. Especially, especially if you're like speed running in the game, you know. And th th 
there's a lot of like force like hand holding it, it, it can like really like slow down the speed run so uh, i can understand uh c c can you hear me yeah yeah i uh, can't understand the last question yeah, okay. okay so uh movie on um so so I noticed that there's a lot of like cool like costumes. What made you decide to want to put costumes in the game? Well, when I made the the character, the main character, the Raku, I was looking for a, a clear, a clean design, a clean silhouette, a clean, clean character. But when I showed when I showed my to my my friends the the character and the first gameplay, the people used to say to put a cape, to put a glove, to put things. You know, they need accessories in the in the in this character. So I decided to make this this outfit, so the player can can choose by by itself what the way they want a Raku dress so it's easier because um, for, for me the I, I prefer Ka uh, Raku the way he's he, 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 he was made without any skin but people prefer th there are people that prefer him using uh, a hat or using uh, a jacket you know this way player can choose the the visual of the player and can feel more immersed in, in the game i think yeah, yeah i think it adds like a more like personal like um element and it makes like you the raccoon will like feel like it's feel like your own like a raccoon versus someone yeah else's yeah. You know, it yeah. really makes it feel like it's it's yours. Like I, I, I always like it when games like have costumes because it has like a lot of like variety. But sometimes some of the problems I have with when games do that, some games only have like two, three like costumes. So it's like if you're only having like one or two, what's the point of like having this whole like costume mechanics so i'm i'm kind of like curious how many like costumes are going to, are going to be in your game a lot of them i i want to make most most costumes as, as i can i think it will be something about 20 20 20 outfits or something about that whoa, whoa, whoa. that's a lot so, so is each costume going to have like a unique challenge in order to unlock? C could you repeat? Could you repeat, please? Uh, is each costume going to have a unique challenge in order to unlock it? Yeah, they will be hide. They will be hidden. They will be hidden, and some some of them you need to to make things and to make challenge. It. Each one you have your way to find it. Yeah. So how did you go about like making sure like each costume is unique and, and then you don't just have like ten costumes that are just like color variants? Like how did you make sure like each costume is unique? Uh, I have, I have again a paper with a lot of drawings, and I I have a a, a sprite sheet a sprite sheet here. When I I have a, a, a silhouette of Raku, so I start drawing a lot of a lot of uh, costumes, and and I can visualize uh, what costumes can we work better with different silhouettes and colors and you know that things. So again, paper and pencil are my best friend in this part. Yeah. So, so, so to give away 
from costumes. I, 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 I want to ask, um, you, you mentioned this a little bit before, but how do you balance, how did you go about, like, balancing the difficulty of your game? Hmm. Balancing is a hard thing to do. Uh, I used to to play by myself and to to measure the the the, dif the difficulty. And I used to ask to my girlfriend to play too, because she's not a pro player, you know. And I can see when she plays. I can see if uh, uh, it's a challenge. It's harder. Or it's too hard, or because I I have a, uh, I have a reference of me playing, me playing, and she playing, and I can make a, a balance. So I ask to, I ask my friends to play too. I have two, or three friends that I I play that that I I send the game for they to play, and I ask I ask they to to record the the scream to send me the video so I can see what they are doing in the game and how they are thinking to to solve the puzzles and this way it's a, a, a way that I can make something like a balance but balance it's a hard thing to do a hard thing to do I need a lot of feedback from the people, from the players, to make a, a right balance. Yeah, because it's one thing if you think it's easy or too too hard, because you, you, you know you you've like played it a bunch of time. It's good to get like other people's feedback because after you play it so many times, it all kind of like feels the same. So it's hard to like yeah. be, like judge your own like game that that's why I like a game designer can can't like really ever truly play their own game in a way if that makes sense but so when i was like playing through it a couple of days ago i noticed there was some tad bit like a voice acting kind of depending on your definition of voice acting but i noticed like Reku kind of has like a voice, has some like sound effects and stuff. How did you go about finding that voice? Um, uh, I take a reference from Ducky Kong. I, I Ducky Kong and Yoke Lily. Cool. I, I I started to to hear that sounds and because they are animals. Mm -hmm. to, they are animals and. What kind of sound makes a, a raccoon? Raccoon. Uh, it's hard to to know what so how a raccoon will sound like. <laughs> so I, I got this reference in the the games that I that I used to play, like the Kong and uh, You Can Lily, and I and I you know I I try to make something similar, or even though I have a direction to go. So, so uh, did you do the voice, or did you get a voice actor or actress, or? I, I did it. I did it. Oh. I recorded my voice. That's pretty talented. I, 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 I didn't even like tell it, it was your voice. So, so you have pretty <laughs> good, good job on that. <laughs> a lot of filters and <laughs> and distortions, you know. <laughs> Technology. Yeah, technology. <laughs> For so, God's sake. So one like important thing I really want like to touch on like your game and game development is like marketing because I feel like marketing is like very important and like not enough like indies really take advantage of of like marketing because they just want like develop, finish the game and like publish it and and put it on like. Steam or Edge or, or the publishing platform of of choice. Um, so, um, how important do you think it is to market your game? How important is game marketing? Again, uh, marketing is very, very important. As as important 
as development itself uh, you cannot forget to market your game because if you don't don't tell the people the, your game exists they will not know about the game so i mean you, I, it's possible you could get lucky but it's really unlikely because like i said earlier like it's so easy to make a game because it's so easy there's so many and like it's your game could get lost even even if it's like yes. a super amazing game like if if you don't do your marketing and like it's it, it, it's kind of d- difficult but at the same time it's not that hard it, it, it's just it's not that expensive at least there's even if you don't have a lot of money there's a lot of like free marketing you can do like yeah, it's not that hard as i said uh, we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have a lot of social media that we can uh, we can share and tell about uh, our work, not only in games and and any 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 other work you can use the social media to to market. Oh oh, and... oh, oh yeah, I, I use it all the time. I feel like I wouldn't like be where I am with like my content and like stream if I didn't like use social media. Yeah. But, but... yeah. Particularly Twitter, Facebook. I don't know. I'm. I. 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 I got my issues with Facebook. I'm. I'm still trying to figure out how to properly like use Facebook from a business perspective. I am. I think I'm slowly understanding and figuring out. But like, to, I. I don't know. I'm more like comfortable on like Twitter. I. I feel like I can interact with people that in Twitter. I can like stumble across. Stumble upon stuff and discover stuff better on Twitter, but mm-hmm, yeah. but so, so you think like social media is an important marketing tool. Uh, are there any other like marketing tools? I think I think social media is very very important because you can even market your game without paying anything, just just asking for people, just the but, sending some some emails and um, get in touch with with youtubers and streamers and you know it's it's hard to to do because you you have to to spend a lot of lot of time doing that because you send you send a hundred emails and you receive one reply it's hard but and it takes time to do but it's not it's not too hard you just need to you just need time to do that and um, and if you don't have time like you, get a social media person like i prefer when game devs do their own social media stuff because as like a consumer and like a person who specializes in, in making online content about indie games I, I like interacting like directly with the devs and like forming that friendship and that like connection but like if, if you don't got time like you still need to get your marketing done like find like a friend or someone or, or, or like hire a like social media person like if you have to yeah i think you need to do that because it's very very important because um it doesn't matter if your game is great if your game is beautiful or if if no one if anyone knows about that so even if you have not enough no enough time to make the marketing of your game you need to hire someone to make it for you um, because it is important as important as the development itself so to continue with this are there like do's and don'ts on social media like other things you shouldn't like do on social media that could potentially like ruin your marketing campaign mm, like like what for example uh, okay i'll use a streaming example because you know that's why i use my social media so uh don't use hashtag support small streamers yeah. that that doesn't work that does not work uh, i think i think if you um uh... Like, like hash, uh, hashtags can work. You just gotta use the right hashtags, and yeah, yeah, and, and and don't put like a ton of hashtags. Like the rule is like between two and three hashtags. 
Um, I don't know. I don't know because because uh, personally, I use a lot of hashtags. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't I, know if it's I, the best way. I I, I I just feel like at least for for like t t Twitter, if you like put like to to me like hashtags, p people really aren't gonna like look at that and like see that. I I, I hear it's different on Instagram. You can put as many hashtags as you want, but like Twitter, you, you're supposed to keep it like around like two or three like yeah. hashtags yeah i think i i'm not the the right person to to answer this question but <laughs> i think maybe i'm i'm doing it wrong because i use a lot of hashtags in my posts <laughs> uh, i mean like did you feel like you gain a lot like attraction from your social media do you think it's helping do you think it's been helping with the marketing of your game? Uh, I didn't understand. Uh, you using social media, has it helped market your game? Has it been successful you, you, you using social media? If if using social media can help the game to, make, to be a successful, successful. Has it helped you? Has it helped your game be successful? I think it helps a lot. I think it helps a lot. And, you know, I, I made up the market in social media and I, I have nothing to, com to complain about it. I think it's working very well. Cool. That's good. <clears throat> so we have like a couple more questions left. So, so if people want, start like thinking about what they want to ask Diego you know you might want to stop but it still might be a tiny bit but okay. I'm mean, just like people know we uh down to the last like four questions on the list so <clears throat> so do you watch a lot of YouTube it, it, it sounds like you do do you watch a lot of YouTube I watch I watch a lot of YouTube uh, okay so I used to I used to watch uh, uh, gameplays and things like that okay so i don't know uh if you keep up with youtube drama and i do want to preface with this i'm not an expert in this subject so there's a lot more like videos that can explain this way better than i can i'm probably gonna butcher this so hopefully diego knows about this so hopefully i don't have to explain it but if i have to explain i'll do my best so do you know about the whole copa thing about uh, I Copa. About. Copa. Copa. Ah, Co Copa. I, I, I heard about, but uh, to be honest, I didn't research a lot of about it, and I, I didn't understand this. Okay. This rules. Okay. This so rules, yeah, so th there's a lot of information. So I don't know what's right, what's wrong. Or like there's a lot. Yeah. So so, uh, so yeah. I, I, friendly and etc. So so, so I, I, I was just like. Fast forward and get get to the point part that has to do with my questions. So the the like policies that YouTube is going to try to implement is when when you upload a video, you're gonna have to even yeah, yeah. mark it if it's targeted towards kids or towards adults. If it's like targeted towards kids, you're gonna you lose some like monetization options i think and stuff yeah, yeah. but That's let's but let's say you you like lie and say it's like target for adult when it's really for kids if you do that the ftc would like find find you for up to like forty two thousand or something like that so you as a game dev how do you think that would affect it especially since you know you, you have a child friendly as uh, a, a, a aesthetic. Um, did, did, are you worried because the whole Copa people aren't gonna want to cover your game? Because uh, I feel like YouTube yeah. coverage is important for your game. Are, are you concerned about Copa? Because we, we, we've heard like YouTubers' perspective and stuff, but I haven't talked to a dev. Like I'm curious how like Copa is gonna affect a developer. So do you have any kind of input? 
Does... I I don't think the copy will will make it bad, but uh, because Raku is not too much for a children uh, a target. Um, when you get the the audience of the the game, the people are between twenty and thirty five years old, so it's not a game for children only. It's it's a family also for children. Yeah. But I think when you make a game uh, that your target is a children, Copa Q, yeah, Copa Q can make it hard to to promote your game because. YouTubers and streamers will will, will not want to to cover your game because of that. You said Copa, yeah. uh, YouTube will will re, will remove the monetization monetization of the, the videos and but I, I, know, I it's 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 too too early to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I I I I do honestly think we're going to figure the situation out. Like people need to not like hit the panic button like let's let's take a step forward like this isn't the first like youtube like change thing like what i'm worried about is people being afraid of copa people being afraid of copa and then causing them to not want to cover games or like yeah. make yeah. content it's less about like if the fcc is actually going to do it and more about like are youtubers now going to be afraid to make because I, i'll be honest when i first heard about it i was like oh i'm i'm fine thinking of getting into youtube but i'm afraid i don't want to get sued because i can't can't like you know i i don't got that money man <laughs> and, and it's not like per channel it's like per video so yeah, but... yeah, I, I think I'll be fine. So, so like we need yeah. to. Let's I... see. Let's see what what will happen because I think people are, are afraid, but but we don't know what will happen. It... It's too early to know. Yeah, I just just want to, to to get like a game developer like perspective because we really haven't like seen a game developer perspective. So mm. that'd be interesting. To, to get like a game developer perspective so thank you for you know giving that perspective so oh, d d yeah and I'm, I'm not like saying not to worry about copa like uh -huh. keep your guard up but like let's relax you know like <laughs> at least I, I that's what i'm telling myself so I, I don't go insane and have like a panic attack over it so <laughs> okay so more about YouTube. How important do you think it is for like a content creator, even like a small content creator, to, to like cover an indie game? Do you, do you think it actually like helps with sales when it comes to for like YouTubers covering indie games? Do you think it's helpful? Well, I don't know if you, if it helps to sell the game, but finally it helps to to make people know about your game, even they don't 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 buy your game but creators is very 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 important because they can show your game and they can uh, say say about their impressions of the game and the people the, the, sub the subscribers they believe what the the, the, the creator is saying they they are following that the person because they believe in it in him so when a creator play your game and and say things like, "Oh, this game is cool. This game is fun. Oh, it's fun. Ah, I have a lot of fun playing it." So, the the their sub the, the sub subscribers will believe it and they will automatically like your game. They will feel more comfortable to know about your game, to know more about your game, and to even buy your game. So it's very very important to have this community of creators by your side so do you have like a top three list of like youtubers you would love like dream youtubers maybe youtubers you've looked up to that you would love to like cover raku venture ah uh, yeah yeah i have i have i'm dream with a day that, that they will cover a game like mine but 
you know it's hard it's hard but uh, uh, i have i have i have three three uh, three special uh, creators brazilian creators ooh. that i i love to see they play in my game uh, in, uh, what, what, what creators if you don't mind me asking I don't know if you know, but the B, how to say in English? Oh my God. B R K. Uh, I will write it in the chat. Uh, okay. B R K. The, 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 beast, the, the biggest guy is this one. Um, I have the Max um, um, uh, Max Pelero 2. Come on, go. Max, uh, come on. Yeah, this tree is the 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 my favorite ones. Mm. So I, I, I think I I, I love mm. I love to see they play in my game, but it's hard. I, who knows? Who knows? Well, it doesn't hurt to like reach out to them, you know, at some point. So, did you know any one of them? Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, no, uh, I I don't, and I, I I don't know if they speak English. So like, even if I did, like I. I... Uh no, they they speak Portuguese only. Uh, Portuguese. Yeah, I don't know Portuguese. Sorry. So you know, <laughs> but, but like if like somebody. To was I would love to cover a game that I make, and and I think. Be cool if they could be your game. One in particular would be the completionist. Have you heard of him? Sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, have you heard of the YouTuber called the completionist? Completionist. Yeah. Mm, I didn't heard. So he pretty much like. Com uh, so he does like reviews of games, but he doesn't just review them. He completes them. So. so he he one hundred percent the games. Ah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah, and, and he is like a big fan of like three D platformers. So like mm. when your game's like out of early access and fully complete, you you should like reach out to him. Like, oh sure, sure, good to know. I, I will note it. Yeah. So, so, so. completionist. Yeah. 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 He's probably one of my favorites. Like he has like a strong like work ethic. Like he puts like a lot of work, like completing a different game each like week and stuff. Like, uh, like he 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 goes like above and beyond. So great, great. Okay, so b b before we. Guys, get your questions ready because we're about to jump into Q and A. But before we jump into Q and A, are, are there like any like topics that we ha have yet to talk about your game or in general that you want to talk about before we head into Q and A? Okay. Uh, did you hear me? Are, are, are there any? Yeah. yeah. Are, are, yeah. Are there any anything you, you want to like mention and talk about the game before we go into Q and A? Ah, what I want to say. So, yeah, I mean, I need to to thank you, everybody, to thank you, all the streamers and like you, like the people oh. that believe it in in Raku Venture or even in in the the start of the game when the game was uh, just a, an alpha version so i uh, just to, to thank you of the community and i want to thank you and still bastion too if he, if he is he is there listening because Ensto was the my my very first player and he is the player until the until now he's playing the game and i oh yeah he's thank you everybody he's here no, no, I, I, I was no. gonna. S <laughs> well, he might be looking. I don't know, but he's a, he's a great guy. I've messaged him a couple of times, so he's cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's a cool. He's a nice guy. A nice guy. Yeah. So I need to thank you, every everyone, every streamer, every player, because without you, without people doing what you are doing now, no one will know about my game. No one will know about me. So 
the game is happening this this is happening because of you so thank you so much okay so king has king of hearts has a question so he asks what's your what's your best advice for, for any game marketing um for any game marketing no um we have some tools that we can use like Kim Mailer and Wovit and Indie Boost. Oh, oh yeah, tools. I, I, I've, I, I've, I'm on Indie Boost. I've used it. It's pretty cool. So. The audio is cutting. Could you repeat, please? Uh, I said I've used Indie Boost before. Not as like a game developer, but as like a content creator. Yeah, yeah, as a content. Yes, yeah, because they are platforms that connect creators and and, and developers so uh, we can put some keys there and then and creators can read in the game to to play and make videos and reviews because it's hard to to get in touch with creators some of them are very very busy yeah. busy uh, and this platforms make it a little bit easier to 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 work so there are there are this these tools are important to to win the games if you want to make it by yourself or if you don't want to have an an if you don't want to mind about your marketing you can look it for a publisher a publisher will make it for you so do you think it's like good to get a publisher or do you have any like opinions about like publishing? Uh, I think it's a personal option because um, a publisher will make a lot of things for you, uh, and finally they will help you a lot. But you need to to pay for it. So it's a decision that you you have to to make if you want to to hire a publisher to to make a a contract for publisher to make some benefits but i i think there are there are yeah good things in in, in both sides uh, uh, working for publisher and working by yourself so you mentioned uh uh key mailer and like game keys before so so are, are you like are you concerned that because this can be a problem with using sites like email and stuff that like people will get a key and then like sell it in some kind of like uh uh key reseller website has that been something you've been concerned about like how have you approached that uh i don't i don't mind i don't mind about it i think Kimailer has a very, very nice organization in, in the platform, and we can, you can choose what creators you give the key. Uh, it's a very organized thing. I don't, I don't think they have this kind of issues. Even for indie indie developers, as small like me, it is hard to to happen. I think we don't need to to mind about it, to worry about it. Okay, so I I want to like bring up a question that I I don't know if Electabyte still there, but like they uh had this question. Have you heard of I F T T T for marketing? I have not heard of that. Have you heard of it? I F I F T T. Uh, f- I- f- f- free tees. Uh, if you like scroll up, you should still see the message. Have you heard of I F T T T? I have not heard of that. No, I didn't heard. Never heard about it. I'm gonna have to look into that. I'm, I'm curious about that now. Let's see. Uh, if there's any other like questions, feel free. Uh, if not, we probably gonna wrap this up i'm just seeing if this i'm screwing up because people might have asked questions earlier
Yeah. Oh, actually, I have a question. So, so I, I do think like digital marketing is a good approach, but I also find like physical marketing can be good too. So, are there like a lot of like conventions in like your area or no? It's a great thing to do because when you have a, a physical copy of your game, it is have a, a lot of uh, valor. Valor. How can I say it? You can you can uh, you can put a lot of value in a physical copy of your game. Um, it's a defined it's a it's an option. It's an option to make it to make a marketing of your game, but. Uh, when you make a physical copy, you have a little limited to to a region, eh? a region when you can send the physical copy of the game. No, no, but it's 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 amazing, it's amazing. Uh, no, no, uh, no, no, like uh, what I'm saying is, uh, are there any like gaming conventions in Brazil? Yeah. that you demo at. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, a a very nice idea, and maybe it's not too, maybe it's a, a little sp expensive thing to do, but uh, the final is a good idea. Oh, oh yeah, I, I would like to make it. I would like to make it if I if I can. Yeah, ex like especially like events like PAX and like GEC. Yeah, yeah. Like those can be expensive, man. The, the, they can even be, be expensive just going as like an attendee be, being like an exhibitor that like adds a lot of, like an additional like cost and it can also be hard to get like ex accepted and approved to be like an ex ex exhibitor so f first you have to get approved and even if you uh get, get a approved for something like indie like mega booth that's still quite a bit of money especially for like an uh indie dev so but but once you're able to like build up more i definitely like recommend like going to cons and exhibiting and and also it's a good way to like meet your community and your fan base like face to face yeah absolutely it's good to to know the community face to face face to face because yeah they can know the the man behind the game and make it much more close to them yeah because i know i i've run into like a couple of devs of games i've streamed at like cons and it's it's like been really emotional and like blown my yeah. mind like seeing them in person especially when you like run into them by accident and you don't like expect them to be there but you like run into them they're like oh. it, it, i don't know it's like a special like feeling yeah so yeah i agree so i don't think there's any more uh questions i mean there's a couple of like statements but... oh, oh actually uh electrobyte did have a earlier question um they said, I, I, I'm curious if and how much Super Mario 3D World was the inspiration f f for the static camera angle. Ah, a lot of inspiration. <laughs> Mario 3D World was the the the, the biggest inf inspiration for for the camera. Was, because... was that that the 3DS like remake of Mario 64? Yeah, but for the gameplay. For the gameplay, I used to the I I I get the reference from the the Mario 64. But <clears throat> when I played yeah, Super Mario 3D World, I loved the camera. I loved that camera and that that lateral progression of the game. So I I decided to use it in my game too. If you play Rack Adventure, you see that the most of time. You will play to the right, like that old 2D platform games when you, uh, you side scrolling games. And I wanted to make it in my game too. If you notice, 
you can you will always progress the progression is made out to do to the right uh, like a, a node to the platform but i definitely love the the camera of, of the mario 2d world that's the reason why it's it's very similar to the game cool cool yeah, yeah, yeah. i can tell you you have a lot of like mario and inspiration so but i think that's it for questions i, I, I want to like first like thank you for coming on my show you know it, it was nice like talking taking your brain and like thank you. learning about your process so where can people find you and where, where can they like ch check out your game thank you thank you for for inviting me to to make this podcast and even i'm not being a, a great english speaker you know mm -hmm. but thank you for inviting and people can find me uh and the easiest easiest way to 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 read me is twitter twitter so you can find me at twitter and send me a dm so you can find me at facebook and you can mail me uh there's a email on the site you can find the site and uh oh thank you king of hearts thank you and you can find the the the, the main site the website of the raku venture i, I place it here uh, the raku raku opa raku I, I, I also venture do, com. do you have his like twitter and his website on the layouts so if you like look at that you can like check out or just click the link he popped in but yeah, your, your, your English hasn't been too bad. There was like a, a couple of mispronunciation, but even us, like English speakers, we're not that great. Like, you know, like <laughs> people may, may think we're, we're like super English experts, but you, you're just like pretty good, you know. So try to not be too like hard on yourself when it like comes to your English, like. I, <laughs> You know, I think it's more of been like the like network issues with the car has been more of the issues, but your English itself has been like pretty solid. But, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. But but, but yeah, guys, check out uh, Racco Ventures, and th this has been our first like podcast like segment of like Nano's Indie Cafe and. Nano's Indie Cafe is a show we run Wednesday through Friday around 2 p.m. MSC at twitch.tv slash nano. Here we uh, promote games and indie games and if you have your own indie game and project, stop by the stream sometime, talk about it, discuss it, like drop the link. But what about trying to get indies like more um, exposure and people who listen to the podcast comment below about your game and like stuff i would like to check it out and and i hope to catch you guys next week <laughs>